Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Uh, per request, because again, this is an interactive channel, meaning that, you know, when you guys have a question, you know, feel free to ask me a question. I'll do my best to answer that question. And uh, one of my subscribers, Sean, if that's right, or Shane, sorry if I got it wrong, uh, his question was, an interesting segment might be where the subscribers send you a question and you have an answer to that question. I know what I would like to know about your sessions, gig and rig, how you set up your sound, playing role, your playing role in the band, just a thought. So I do my best to answer those questions. The first one is, uh, I guess, about the sessions. You know, I've been doing this professionally since I was like 20 years old. And... It's important because a lot of us don't realize this is a business. So you got to line it up yourself in the format of the business. Meaning that if you are serious about becoming a professional musician, you need serious professional representation. Meaning that you need attorney lawyers. Meaning that you need uh, managers, booking at managers, and, 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 and things of that nature. The majority of the sessions that I participate in and get paid well for, I, my manager finds these gigs. You know, and... Uh, they're professional gigs and, uh, you know, that's how that works. I and mean, as far as the sessions itself, it varies because sometimes they might book my entire band to do a session. Sometimes they just might book me. Sometimes they just might book the drummer, you know, but uh, you got to know what you're doing, you know, because uh, when it comes to session work, you know, they expect you to come in, be professional, give them what they ask for and be done. Because I mentioned in another video where you got people where, as far as uh, attention young bass players, that was the name of the video, where uh, people come in and give them too much. And it's like, this is not your show. Your name ain't on the marquee. This is what we want you to give you. Keep it uniform. Some people don't know how to do that. But eventually, you learn how to do that. You know, so that's kind of, you know, the, the session world for me. Uh, I've been in some sessions, like I mentioned in the other video, young bass players, where when I realized that it ain't to my... Uh, setting meaning that i don't perform or do my work around drug addicts and alcoholics you know people that want to get high in the studio i got time for that nonsense you know i've been in sessions where i had to pack up my gear immediately when i seen them got cocaine across the the, uh, the mixing board time to go you know i'm not a part of that 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 nonsense so the next one is a uh, gig and rig i keep it simple you know i use a marshall amp you know or perhaps sometimes I have a Fender amp here at home, but the majority of the time that I do studio work and Marshall amps, I love them, you know, because you can bring a small one to a gig and those things kick because I don't like carrying big, humongous amps. And uh, many, many years ago when I was like in my early, late teens, I performed at this, uh, the, I think it was the Marina Club downtown in Chicago back in the 80s, and my amp went out and the guy that... Uh, the band that came in after us, or actually before us, he let me use his amp. He left it on Stacy. It's going to plug in, man. I love that thing. I've been playing basically Marshalls the entire time. So that's kind of, you know, my, my professional rig or gig. Uh, I just keep it simple. You know, just a Marshall, uh, you know, and just a few, you know, pedal, floor pedals, which I use uh, exclusively here on YouTube, which is the Die FX7. A lot of people think I'm using an amplifier when I do my covers. I'm going through a preamp. I've only used the amplifier maybe twice out of all the videos I've ever done. And you can get those on eBay now for about $50. They're still, I got like five. In case of one die, I got three, four more of those. Back up. Uh, how do you set up your sound? That is something that's very personalized. Because I got some people, and I, and I discourage them from trying to mimic exactly what they think that I have. Because guess what? Even if you got the same equipment, it's going to sound different. Because you're different from me. You know, you can have the same guitar and pass it around a group of musicians. It's going to sound different each time each guy plays it, let alone different style of music. But again, my setup here, which I go through in detail in DVD number seven for my guitar lessons one through seven, which is over seven hours of me walking you through things you need to know how to become a good rhythm guitar player. I even uh, have a whole DVD dedicated towards, I think it's DVD number six, where I walk you through my setup and how I set up, how I plug it up. You know, so uh, if you're really interested in knowing, because that's like a whole hour spill there, uh, $35 for the entire set, one through seven. And uh, I'll walk you through, you know, how I get my sound as far as tonality, uh, the actual equipment that I'm using and things of that nature. So uh, last and not least is uh, 
playing your role in the band. I play in at least three different bands. Sometimes I sit in for other bands to help them out, but primarily I work within th with with three different bands. And out of those three bands, two of those bands are more or less, I guess, the go-to guy. You know, the leader. You know, if you want to call it that. I really don't call it that because uh, I don't look at myself as the leader. I'm just looking at myself as contributing a little extra than others in the band because they, they just might not want to. There's some people that want to do these things. There's people like, you can have it. I don't want it. So, you know, uh, I'm responsible for kind of putting together the playlist. I'm responsible for, I guess, mapping out perhaps the venues. And then my uh, our manager talks to the, the club owners and, and get us booked to things of that nature. Uh, I don't envy our lead singers because all the focus is always on the guy with the mic in his mouth, in his face, or the woman. You know, I'm one of those guys I like to be behind the scenes, and if I'm elected to kind of oversee the band overall, I don't have a problem with that. It ain't an ego thing. I just like getting things done and having it done right. So I guess that's kind of, you know, the answers to your question. Uh, I've been doing this for a very long time, you know, and I've done a lot of things musically, you know, not just playing guitar, but, you know, playing different instruments, writing, producing, sound engineering, you know. I kind of like to do a lot of different things. And again, it's not an ego thing. It's just that the more you do, the better you become at what you do. Because I mentioned this on many occasions. If you want to become a really good guitar player, you have to kind of know the ins and outs of the other instruments, meaning like the bass, which is like the cousin of the guitar. And a lot of people as, gu as guitar players don't realize how important the bass player is to their playing. Because the majority of the stuff that I tag when I don't have sheet music, I rely on the bass notes. And then I just match up those bass notes with the chords, you know. And that's how I kind of able to tabulate stuff so quickly. Because you got some people, I don't want to have nothing to do with the bass. I just want to play my guitar and not worry about that. That's your choice. But, you know, when you do that, you kind of hindering yourself from really learning how to be a better guitar player because we're all connected it ain't like we're separated or separate you know we're all putting together making a contribution to this overall large picture you know and uh, again you become a much better musician when you're in tune with the other instrumentation that's going on and uh, there's some people again that just kind of tunnel vision they don't want to be bothered but i strongly recommend you know, not even buying a bass, just using your guitar sometimes to play the bass lines and songs. And then once you do that, you can kind of determine what chords to be used in that particular song. So until next time, I'm going to set up. And as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Thanks for watching.